It's the 10 to 1 podcast with your host, Brad Ullman, featuring Ben Conowitz and Nate Laux. And here's the podcast. Welcome to the show, fans and friends. It's a, it's a, it's another episode. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's the last episode of 2023. It's we, a big deal. We did it. We made it. We, we dealt with a writer strike. We dealt with an actor strike. The pandemic. It's still, it's we, still happening. We, it's, it's back again. It's all over. COVID's all over. But we, you know what? We, we came back and we've had new episodes. We, just, we just finished a trio of new Saturday Night Lives, and this is the last one of the year until we get into 2024 with a whole new set of episodes. We were just riding so high with Emma Stone crescendoing. All uh, into, 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 you know, it's funny that you say you crescendoing the Adam Driver because I didn't realize that you thought the Adam Driver episode was better than the Emma it Stone was. episode. It was. I disagree. Uh, oh, I, no. It was, it but was. also, oh, okay, okay. I, I read on on the Reddit on the subreddit for Saturday Night Live. There's a lot of people that did not like the Emma Stone episode. Those uh, people you know, are wrong. Yeah, wrong. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I I was like, and it had so many upvotes. I'm like, what? Am I taking crazy pills here? If you didn't like the Emma Stone episode out there, uh, who hurt you? I think that a lot of people were just down on SNL, and we kind of were too, but they're uncap- incapable of change, like my father. And so, <laughs> just kidding. My, dad's, not, my dad's actually changed a lot. You could learn a lesson, SNL subreddit. I'm not cynical about SNL. I get sad when they're not good, because I love it so much. Yes. But I'm not cynical, and sometimes I think on, on Reddit and other places online, Twitter, X, um, people are just kind of cynical about it. They want to they not were, like it. They were still ready for another bad episode, and yet here we are. Uh, episode was a great episode. But and not as... Ever, g- even better. Yeah, agreed. But you would say Emma Stone... I better. thought Emma Stone's was better. And that's why you're wrong. And you were, you were upset, though. I want to revisit this. That we gave Emma Stone MVP of that episode. I wasn't upset. No, I you just, cried. You I cried. Didn't. You said she deserves an Emmy, but she doesn't deserve <laughs> MVP of her own episode. That's a bold. I claim. mean, granted, MVP of our podcast episode is a higher honor. Rewarding but. MVP and an Emmy are, don't have the same qualifiers in my mind. So thank you very much. Uh, fuck your mother and whoa. Yeah, no, not your mother. Easy. My mom's dead. Wow, really? <laughs> I'm the only one with a mom. All right, so we uh, That's a good eight point. Eight, <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> so weird. This, by the way, our other epi- our other podcast, Go Flicks Yourself. Uh, that is that's supposed to be the the crass one. This one we're supposed to keep the reins uh, a little, little somewhat tight, professional, you know, a little, little on the rails. Hey, let me let me tell you something. It's the last episode of the year. I'm gonna do the fuck I oh want. Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> sorry everybody for Brad. And guess what? Nate's not editing this episode, so no, it's this, gonna be dirty. I'm sorry, listeners. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak in some nasty sounds. Uh, I don't like this. Uh, at all. Hey, I I have something else to get to before we get to the Kate McKinnon stuff. Today, um, we're recording this on December 18th. Marks the twenty sixth an twenty sixth anniversary of Chris Farley's death. Oh. Can you believe that? Twenty six years. Cool bummer. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> twenty six years. Uh, uh, how how much did Chris Farley uh, play into your love of SNL? It was a pretty big part of it. Were you uh, a middle schooler that did Chris Farley imp- impressions to everyone you talked to? I don't remember. I honestly can't can't speak. I don't want to like go back and say like mm, I totally took my persona from him as I got older and as I got to be a bigger guy he did take holy his- <laughs> crap I I just took cues from, from Chris Farley on how to how to behave and get laughs I mean he was he had the blueprint like you could be a charismatic big boy and get laughs and and it's you know what to this day it pays off so, so you, thanks Chris you you use your way as part of the comedy right it's so weird uh I at at the gas station like a year ago I, I remember, I think I told Brad this story where I was like, I, I basically impersonated Chris Farley and I wasn't trying to. And it happens all the time. And I think about it more and more now. Where I'm like, oh, yeah, let's, let me squeeze, let me squeeze right by there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry about that there. You know, and it's he's got that kind of Wisconsin, you know, accent. Uh, and I did it all the time uh, inadvertently. So, yeah, thanks, Chris Farley. I love you and we all miss you. Yeah, we did a lot of Matt Foley when I was a kid, for sure. Uh, a lot of uh, his character in Billy Madison, a lot of Tommy yep. Boy, always, yep. always quoting Chris Farley lines. Uh, so, yeah, he was definitely a big part If you of think of a uh, Chris Farley sketch that you think is, for you anyway, the sketch that you think of with Chris Farley, what is it? Oh, it's Matt Foley, for sure. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's, that's the sketch. And it's the it's the the Matt Foley with David Spade and Christina Applegate. Yep, where they're trying not to break. Yeah. The other one I always think of as well is the uh, hidden camera commercial. 
with the, the uh, coffee. Yeah, the coffee. I think about that, that one. That one always comes and to I, mind. Too. And the the beer commercial. Yeah, the, the, uh, Schmitz Gay. <laughs> yeah, where they uh they they've got this like uh, yeah that's the uh like I think the, I'm gonna like the, house the city. Van, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Van Halen vibes. <laughs> that yeah. one, and then uh, oh Hurley he boy was always so funny. Mm. El Nino, <laughs> <laughs> which is Spanish for the Nino. Remember, remember that one time you were in the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> Just so many great stuff. And I, I, I agree. He defined so much of my middle and high school years uh, for comedy and uh, really introduced me to loving SNL. So uh, flash, rest in peace, Chris Farley. Flashing forward uh, to a, di- a different generation of SNL uh, and celebrating a, uh, a little bit more of a happier anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, in 2005, was when Lazy Sunday premiered. As an SNL digital short. So 18 years ago. Yeah. And a lot of people credit that as being kind of like the first sketch that really went viral and kind of like put SNL digital shorts on the map. If you There's an SNL documentary series that VH1 produced a long time ago that broke down SNL by decade. And when they talk about this part of, of SNL, Bill Hader specifically talks about how seeing Lazy Sunday on line was how he found out about what youtube was and that kind of helped like youtube kind of like spread around and whatnot i think even youtube acknowledges some of that history um side note i wish vh1 would put a lot of their stuff online uh because yeah especially i love the 90s all those snl documentaries (laughs) i wish i could watch them again because they were so good and i I loved re-watching yeah yeah where they and they weren't even that fancy of documentaries right they would just pretty much show some they'd have like a Talking a, head. a theme, but then they would bring comedians yep. and you know stuff yeah. like that. And, uh, the, and, and Michael the, Ian Black would always be on them. The yeah. the SNL ones were like actually great little like documentaries too because they did have all the key cast members and writers and stuff like that. And yeah, Victoria Jackson was on there all the time. <laughs> I, I take some new episodes of Pop Up Video as well. I like I, Pop Up Video. Pop-up video. I, want, I want Pop Up Movie. <laughs> yes, I, actually, I would I want a, a movie that I've seen a hundred times, like Jaws. Yep. I just want to watch Pop Up Movie. And be like oh, that's in real time. Yep. Oh my god, I would love that. You know, you're a big book on tape fan. You should uh, check in uh, audio commentary. I don't think they make books on tape still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pop I, in the laser disc. I think we have an SNL episode yeah. to review. Kate, nah, now nah, we're fine. McKinnon, we're fine. her Kate, first Kate time hosting. McKinnon, McKinnon. Yeah, uh, making the 39th longtime former cast member to return as host. 39 of them they've had. Wow. And Ben's gonna name all of them. <laughs> yep. Charles Rocket. <laughs> Five times. <laughs> Jerry Miner. Jerry Miner. <laughs> um. So yeah, it was a great episode. Billy Eilish was back. Billy Eilish, yeah. my favorite drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> William Eilish. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, like we said, it's the last episode of 2023. Kate McKinnon came back. She's hosting for the first time. Uh, she left the show in 2022. It feels like it's been longer. It but, does feel longer. But right? no, she left with Kyle Mooney and AD Bryant and uh, Pete Davidson. Eventually, ended up. Did she leave as well. Halfway through. No, they left. They all left at the end. Okay. Yeah, they all left at the end of the show. Uh, they did not pull a Cecily Strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so she she returned and. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but just just to give a little bit of a sneak preview, this episode felt a lot weirder than I anticipated. It did. It, it was not the episode that it was not the following the trajectory that I wanted to. It was not. A, I will say this. I don't think it was a bad episode. Yeah, but I agree. It, it was not a great episode. Well, let's get into it. Let's. Wh- how was the cold open? All right, Christmas awards cold open. Two hosts played by Heidi Gardner and Bo and Yang honor family and friends at the ninety fifth Christmas awards. This is uh, kind of an idea that they usually have where uh, each cast member gets to play some kind of character or bit in this. In this, So probably almost every cast member was in it. Um, this was not a political cold open. So let's let's talk about that. Did you like that part of it? Uh, in theory. That they tried a, <laughs> that they tried a non-political in, cold open. In theory. Open. Now, I want to say when we, when we say SNL, <laughs> SNL writers and cast, please stop with the political cold opens. Uh, don't replace it with a completely different premise that is equally as mediocre. <laughs> I, I thought there was some laughs in here. There, it wasn't great, but I thought there was some laughs. You in must here. have Where, dug what, deep. What what specifically did you think was was funny? Um, the okay, all uh, right, so good. No, the the okay. uncle that brings the dog over. Like I I found these characters in my life a little bit. I, I so, think that the 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 image of that big dog yeah, in yeah. that in in that person's lap was amusing. I, this this felt like hey you know what 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 we should do something that everybody will understand and and has a response to this is like the common ground we'll find and that will be funny 
they found the common ground where yeah isn't it weird that like these people exist in the holidays none of it was funny yeah they just i thought it was fine i didn't think it was that funny but i thought it was fine no and honestly like it just you the audience wasn't even into it like it felt so stilted and awkward like there were silences when there should have been laughs after punchlines mm-hmm. and it's like oof this is this is not good guys and they didn't escalate at all they just repeated that over that's over the thing is they did not escalate and right. then by, by the third time they cut back to a uh, uh and and heidi garner i was like oh we're, we're still going there, there's more <laughs> of the and I, I bet you it's not getting any better i know i'm right the premise, though, of taking things that all of us have experienced through the holidays, the awkward things, and making an award show out of it, I don't think it's a bad premise. But No, it's not right. a bad premise, but it was just not executed in a way that felt like it was satisfying. I, just, I don't think I laughed out loud once during the sketch, and it just it just felt weird watching it. It felt like it was happening during dress rehearsal, and they had half the audience there. Hmm. All right, moving on. A monologue by Kate McKinnon, written by Mike DiCenzo, Jake Nordman, Allison Gates, Kate McKinnon, Maya Rudolph, and Kristen Wiig. Longtime former cast members Kate McKinnon returns to Saturday Night Live for the first time as a host. She discusses various subjects, including what she has been up to since leaving the show. Additionally, she sings alongside Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph, who are back. I, I she mentions in the the monologue that she feels more comfortable doing characters than she does being herself. Oh, I and, I, and you could see with that. this yeah. monologue, I believe her. 100%. But I, I didn't hate this monologue. Yeah, honestly, at this at the same time. The awkwardness with which she clearly like was delivering the monologue because she wasn't comfortable with it made it a little bit yeah. more endearing. So oh, I, 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 the level of charm here is yeah. off the charts. Like I, I was, I felt for her. Yeah, I was like, oh god, somebody save her. Mm-hmm. I also loved how she kept saying uh, variations on anyway, like any horse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that that was a nice little touch. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting because this monologue is kind of proof as to how and why Kate McKinnon was so great on Saturday Night Live. And it also shows why maybe this episode didn't work as well as you might want an episode to work with a returning cast member. Um, And I think it's largely because, like she says, she does like disappearing into character so much that having her become the star of the show isn't necessarily what you want to see. It's not what... what we are used to either yeah but that does not explain though why some of the sketches weren't that great because she was it, always the star of every sketch she she was in but at the same time i think it kind of does because what kate mckinnon hosting means is that we get more of her quirky side sense of humor throughout every sketch or we get her playing characters where she's not necessarily like the funny one when you want to see her being the funny one also there is no straight man host like and there, there's a difference between a straight man cast member and straight man host when kate mckinnon gets to play against you know uh literally any any host that, that hosts that live you're watching that interaction and going oh kate mckinnon was hilarious yeah uh next to the the, the person that was mm-hmm. hosting that we and trying to keep up with her yeah now that she's doing that and andrew just mukes is gonna be the straight person it doesn't work as well for me yeah exactly and we'll, and we'll talk about specifics more once we get to their sketches but but yeah because yeah, i want to unpack that a little bit more as we go i will i will say it was a nice touch having maya rudolph and Kristen wick come yeah. back but it was kind of surprising that we did not get an ad bryant or cecily strong return i'm okay episode. with that because Kristen wick is hot she does look very good. Yeah, she's. It's been a while since we've seen listen, her. Listen, I don't know what uh, what what tanning beds uh, there there exist in, in in whatever future she came from with that haircut, but I am down. So, did we ever figure out what happened with the Cecily Strong stuff from last week? It sounds like uh, she backed out because she felt uncomfortable with the material and thought that there would probably be backlash because of the content being based around the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. Really, which is yeah. a it's a weird thing because. You, I mean, somebody in her life told her you got to back out of this. Yeah, I, I that's, that, that's that's probably like a representation thing where they were like, I wouldn't recommend. But I, you're in the, talks what, to be in this new movie. Let's not rock. I, it I mean, there there was no pushback on this sketch, was there? Oh, absolutely. oh, there totally was. I did not hear any of it. That's that's pretty surprising. Well, you're not you're not spending enough time on Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there was some people upset about it. Oh, there's there's, oh, there's people so upset weird. any mention of the Palestinian and Israeli conflict. Mm-hmm. If you try to make any joke at all touching upon it no matter no matter what everyone's like this this is not fit for comedy that's this, 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 this. <laughs> that's exactly what they all sound like too <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on north pole news killer whale attack a news correspondent played by mikey day interviews an elf played by kate mckinnon following a killer whale attack in the north pole chloe Feynman portrays poppy tinselbottom and bow and yang plays the secretary 
Poppy Tinsel Bottom was my nickname in college. <laughs> <laughs> ben, what did you think of this one? So I think that Eddie Murphy did it better uh, when they had him host and he was uh, played an elf in a news story. Yeah, this close. is no, it literally was a North Pole news. Yeah, and it was, this and what, is a recurring. And, and what was Eddie Murphy's name in that sketch? I actually don't remember. Ah, damn it, it. You're, you missed it. You're supposed to be. It doesn't matter what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a good line. Thank you, Brad. Sorry. Sorry, I screwed that up. It's okay. No, but um, the the way that Eddie Murphy played that character and the way that Kate McKinnon played her character, obviously both characters, but the crazy scottish accent yeah it just didn't work it was an odd choice yeah she does so many great characters but i thought the same thing like this is a weird character choice it's just a choice you know and it is a choice it's it's her choice and whatever but i just it just didn't come together for me yeah what did you think no i i'm right there with ben i agree I, i think eddie murphy did it better having eddie murphy as like just the crazy screaming person on the news worked really well kate mccann's character just didn't really bring any last for me and this is an issue that I think happens a lot throughout this episode. There was something up with the timing throughout that, this entire episode. That a hundred percent, and we'll get to another sketch where I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is bad." Yeah, it was just like the the people bouncing off each other with dialogue and just just the way things were like were were coming. It 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 all honestly felt like a dress rehearsal episode where everyone was still kind of like missing their cues out. and stuff like that, especially when it comes to the certain physical cues. Yeah, camera cuts were were pretty off. Yeah, that's interesting because sometimes the dialogue is off and cue cards or whatever, but the cuts are still there. So it, it is interesting to say everything was behind in this yeah. episode. It and it, like. it, 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 of course, comedy is timing, right? So mm-hmm. if you're off with those cuts. Little bits oh, al- it, also it, just make a big difference. Yeah, 100%. Moving on, Pongo, written by Sarah Sherman and Dan Bulla, a family consisting of Kate McKinnon, Mikey Day, Sarah Sherman, Chloe Feynman, and Andrew Dismukes opens a secret christmas gift this was very much a sarah sherman sketch uh did you think it was funny though i think that the idea was funnier than what was executed uh because i do like this concept of having this strange uh nondescript pet that it comes to life in stop motion as this character that like the kids latch onto and everything and having it escalate to this point of like pet cemetery stephen king you know, kind of scenario was really funny, but there was something about how it played out uh, that just didn't feel like it entirely came together for me. I don't know if it's like the interaction between the kids and Pongo didn't really feel like it worked mm-hmm. well as a visual effect because sometimes it was clear they used a tangible model of sure. it. Other times they used like computer animation to make it look like it was moving. Um, but there was something about it that I just had a trouble latching on to, even though I did appreciate the idea. Yeah, Dan Bull on his Instagram, I think he helped kind of work this out a little bit, but he said Sarah Sherman essentially came to him with this idea fully formed. So she had this idea in her head, but I, I also thought there was one shot cinematography like where... Uh, I wish I could. I wish I had it with me. Where this they, is the one where she's digging the grave. Yes, and the lighting was incredible. That was incredible. Yeah. It was a great shot. So it was shot very well. It just didn't come together for me as as well as it could have either. Yeah, ben, what do you think? I think that in in this instance, it escalated just too quickly. I think that they didn't they didn't have a lot of time, obviously, to 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 do it. Um, you're not going to slow roll this thing, but almost immediately, it was like either me or the dog. Like it was, it, yeah. it happened so so quickly. That there was just no no real development there. Uh, that that's hard to do in a sketch that is only three minutes long to five minutes long. Whatever, I get that. But like sketches that this reminded me of that worked better uh, when Kristen Wiig was trying to get Bill Hader and the family to eat the pizza that wasn't pizza. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that reminded me. Like, what? No, sir. What is it? Yeah. Well, what do you mean? It's dinner. No, you, that's not an answer. Like, that's the kind of like reality that I can get behind. This seemed to be like. More of, uh, you know, er- the entire family's on board and then there's one person that is like, but but the one person that's supposed to be the straight person is is also crazy. Yeah. So that's why I just may- maybe making Sarah Sherman the one that doesn't get it and why do you love this thing so much, but her level of like wild behind the eyes was just a little too much. Mm-hmm. That's it's just all, yeah. A lot of good ingredients here. I just didn't think they could pull it off. I almost wish they they that they she would have saved this and turned it into like a half hour Christmas special or oh, something. Okay. Mm-hmm. Pongo saves Christmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Create a whole character. Yeah. Behind it. Yeah. I'll give it to you. Pongo was fucking creepy. Moving on. This is the one I've probably seen the most uh, online fodder about, especially on Reddit. Uh, and it seemed like YouTube liked this one too. 
Uh, Abba Christmas, written by Allison Gates, Ken Selda, and Celeste Yim. A commercial promotes Abba's recently discovered Christmas album, featuring performances by Kate McKinnon, Bowen Yang, Kristen Wiig, and Maya Rudolph. The commercial also includes James Austin Johnson as the announcer. I think people genuinely love when cast members are being silly. And you have these three friends, dear friends, Kate McKinnon, Maya Rudolph, and Kristen Wiig. That's right. You hear that, Bo and Yang? You're not their friend. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> just being super silly. And obviously, Bo and Yang is the perfect person to add to that. Um, and, and so it doesn't so much become about the sketch. It becomes about them escalating their you know, closeness and silliness. Yeah. In watching, watching Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph like sing into one another. Yeah. And block the camera, and like Kristen's trying so hard to keep it together. Yep. And you know that that just makes Maya lean in even further. So I, I could watch. So this do all you day. like that, Ben? Like, I do. Because again, then the sketch isn't the thing. The then, sketch right? is it's, no longer. The, I, yeah. I don't. I, ask me what. Ask it's me like, what that it's is, like I don't it's, even know. It's like Lisa from Temecula. Like that sketch premise was was okay on its own, but it's taken to a new level. But because it becomes part of like the cast's experience, and the you, whole table's trying yeah, and, not to and laugh. you're loving that all of them trying not to laugh, watching Pedro Pascal break, watching Bo and Yang break, yep. and this is the same thing. Like watching Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig sing at each other, even when they're not phasing each other. Like when when they were That's singing into better. each other's hair, That's they were better. they were still laughing, which was yeah. So there's another uh, another sketch coming up later that I'll say the same thing about. I don't know that I laughed out loud once during this, but I had a smile on my face the entire time. Mm. And I, I can still very much enjoy this without being like, oh, that's a funny punchline. And I was. I was enjoying myself the whole time I watched this. You agree, Brad? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that the sketch itself uh, was fine, but then I but I enjoyed it a lot more because of the interaction between the, those four cast members, for sure. Do you agree, Mr. Neal? Yeah, I agree. I just love those three, and Bowen as well. I love all four cast members, but... The three that are gone. What do you have against Bowen Yang? Uh, I love Bowen, but I I love the three of them back and being silly and having fun and just saying, "Don't worry, guys, we got this." Sure. Right? Um, and yeah, I, I could watch all day too. All right, gifts from mom. Parents portrayed by Kate McKinnon and James Austin Johnson give gifts to their children, played by Chloe Feynman and Marcella Hernandez, and their partners Molly Carney and Devin Walker. What do you think of this one? So I. I like this one for the for the most part. It suffers from the same kind of thing that some of the other sketches do, where the timing feels a bit off and and odd as far as the the delivery. Um, because I we we've we've all had you know uh, parents typically, especially moms, be like like be like you know try and downplay their gift like you know, know. Oh, like, oh it's nothing yeah i, I don't it's I don't, just I don't it's know. just a little it's just a fun thing. Is that, is that what moms do? <laughs> oh my god! Yes, Nate, it is. And, <laughs> uh, and so like. I I I I get that and I and I like that, but I feel like this leaned too much toward towards that when I I think that the more interesting aspect was elevating the the way that they felt about their daughters to the boyfriends because James, that was funny James yeah James Austin Johnson giving those two terrible gifts to them in a reference to like how they think about their daughters. I thought was was really funny, but then they like they. I'll like, give it six months. Uh, the way yeah. my daughter's gonna treat you, you'll see. And, but then they lean back. It's like, oh, it's okay. McKin- it's just gonna go back to like insulting her own gifts and stuff like that, it, which was amusing. But it wasn't amusing enough to carry on the sketch for that long. Yeah, I thought it was fine. Yeah, I, I there there was enough in here to watch it and not hate it. No, yeah, there was enough going on there. But again, there were timing issues. There were a lot of timing issues in this one as well, where. Just um, the, the the camera's cut wasn't exactly lined up with where she was in the room, and I don't know. It just it was just all over the place. All right, moving on. Tampon Farm, written by Jake Norblin, Kate McKinnon, and Allison Gates. Kate McKinnon plays a woman who sings about a tampon farm. Joining her are Kristen Wiig, Maya Rudolph, former longtime writer Paula Pell, musical guest Billie Eilish, Molly Carney, and the entire female cast. The song also features Marcelo Hernandez towards the end. Um, I like a lot of the songs that SNL does because I also like them as songs. You know, there's been some really kind of bangers this year that I thought were good songs. I didn't, I didn't love this one, and I don't know why. Like, I I should. It was it was funny enough, but it just didn't have. I don't know. It just nothing. It didn't come together for me. Did you guys like this one? I I liked it, but I I agree with you as far as your musical critique. I I don't think. I think the song is is well uh, well structured and like well played. It's not a catchy song, but conceptually 
And the way it's carried out, it reminded me of the Naked in New York City sketch, which is such a nonsensical musical thing. What Naked in New York City has going for it is it's a catchier song. It's lively. Yep, that, it's it's it, easy to get into. It, it sounds like a Broadway song. Yeah, this feels more like a middle of the road, relaxing country song, and there's not really anything to really like. Yeah, there's not a hook. Yeah, there's no there's no strong hook to it. But I like the idea of like taking something this nonsensical as the existence of a tampon farm, which makes no sense whatsoever. Wait, what? And the escalation of it becoming a thing where like, oh, they're all singing, so the farm's getting shut down and condemned. Like it's it's a funny narrative to see play out. Uh, and having everybody sing the song and everything, bringing Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph and Billie Eilish into play was was a fun touch as well. Uh, but yeah, I do agree that musically like, it's not you strong. Don't like, you don't like Paula Pell? Oh, I do love Paula Pell. Paula Pell is hilarious. Okay. Um, but it's uh, he's just upset because we got him for Bowen Yang. I know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I like this, but I do agree with you musically that it's not sh- as strong, but I, st- I still enjoyed it. Yeah, for me, if you're going to do a song, you better make the song good as well. Like sure. It needs to be both. But. I think that those are all fine points. I think that the thing that made it better than that for me, the visuals were great. Every time they like they laid down in a a pile of thousands of of uh, tampon, uh, 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 what are car cartridges? I don't know. <laughs> what do you say? Tampon <laughs> cartridges. I don't know what they are. Applicators. Sorry. <laughs> and like like Paula Pell has like a little worm crawling on one of them, and then they run their hands in a wagon full of I don't know. That imagery really made me laugh. It really did. I wasn't necessarily loving the song. It was fine or whatever, but. The they went all out with again as they always do with set design yeah and it was that that really elevated it to a, another level I won't say it's an incredible uh, amazing sketch but I definitely was interested the whole time I was watching it because of the visuals and that's fair all right moving on weekend update with Colin Joseph Michael Che cartridges weekend update <laughs> anchors Colin Joseph Michael Che cover the week's top stories such as Prince uh, Lewis's missing finger in the royal family's Christmas photo due to a Photoshop error. And Loma Linda, California's designation as a blue zone. Additionally, Joke Swap makes its return for the first time since the season 46 finale. We'll get to Joke Swap in a second, but let's talk about the pedometer. So, has there really been three years since they've done a Joke Swap? Yeah, because they they started just throwing them in basically where you could tell, you know. No, they always did them either at the end of the year or at the end of the season. But no, like in the past couple of years, that since they have actually yeah, no, done it's one. been a, it is it has been a while. I didn't even realize it had been yeah. that so. Long. But they had been doing it, pepper them in throughout right. the season. Obviously, where you see like oh, you know, making Colin. If you remember something. right, we were really hopeful last year uh, during the Christmas season that they do it. But it was the Paul Rudd episode, and they oh, that's yep. right because yep. of the yeah the variants. So, so there you go. So All we right. got a, we got a joke. Swap, swap Crazy. This year. So predominant. Um, ben, I mean, the predominant is uh, by now. Th- those of you know what it is. How much uh, interaction, uh, believed or or non believed, uh, happened between Michael Che? No, and always Colin believed. Joseph. No, no, not like you'll say like uh, there wasn't any. I think there was a lot. So you said that oh, I I was not believable. That there was interaction. yeah. Is the predometer an objective it's metric not, or it's no? Not, it's very subjective. No, but it's yeah. Brad's. It's, it's subject to Brad's whims and whimsy. It's objective to me. But because of Joke Swap, I gotta say this is extremely high. Where would you go though? It's got to be. It's got to be the highest of the season. I'm Only not, because of joke swap, or did you think some of the jokes were good too? No, and see that's the thing. I think that the barometer doesn't really have a lot to do with how strong the jokes are. I think it really does. Like we talked about, it helps if the jokes are better. Yeah. But the interaction between the two of them is really the the thing that matters the most. Yeah. So I'm going ninety. I'm gonna go ninety four. Nope. I'm gonna go ninety two. Uh, nope. Yes, <laughs> ninety two. Um, and I agree. I think it's gonna be very high. What do you think, Brad? Do you have this one ninety five, boys? I'm closer and I didn't go over, oh, so yeah, I won this one. Um, now, I also want to know from Ben if you can give us a rundown of who Dr. Hattie Davis is. I thought that that was a tremendous thing to do. I I I almost had to pause it and think for a while because I'm like, I need to know how, how in on it she is. I need to know that she's cool with it. I need Otherwise, it's a very weird prop for Michael Che to use. Like a, a real, a real person, a real activist that really did march with Dr. Martin Luther King, right? No, it is an actress, actually. Is it not somebody for real? Colin Jost thought it was real as oh, well. Oh, thank God. It was not real? No, it is not oh, real. Oh, thank God. Dr. Hattie Davis does not exist. Oh, thank Colin, God. That is Michael hilarious. Che brought her on. I, that is Colin even Jost even genuinely thought better. she was. That, oh, my God. Yes. You guys didn't know oh, that? Yeah. So no. I, it was I played didn't. by actress Daphne Skeeter. Okay. That is 
brilliant. Oh so my god! So do you go? Do you go higher even on the bedometer? Yeah, that go. That's, that takes it over a hundred. <laughs> oh my god! And that's just, I mean, just Che like so oh Che that was Che the, Che. That was the only thing that gave me pause. So because I was like, you don't use a civil rights activist. No, she as a, as she would have she would have oh, had. To have been but in even on if it. she yeah. was in on it, you it's still the optics are still a little. Re, iffy. Rewatch it with some of the things Michael Che was saying, and it gets even funnier when he keeps on saying. She marched with she Dr. Marched Dr. Dr. King. Dr. King, and that and that college host didn't know because oh, he's that so is white. Amazing. Like, that, that's perfect, Michael J. I thought that the prank that you pulled on Colin without having no one laugh at it his was jokes. already so good, but the fact that oh, it's that it's Michael a fake Jay person oh my is an God. all-time SNL per- person. Because I looked her up because I had never heard of her, but I mean, I, 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 there's chances that I hadn't heard of her, right? And I'm like, no, that, that that's not her. And then I found an article that's like. Uh, played by Daphne, whatever Skeeter. Skeeter, good <laughs> for her. Amazing, I love it. Uh, I love it. I so mean, much. Uh, that, yeah, that's just that's just brilliant. That just that takes it to a whole new level. But yeah, I mean, jo- jo- how st- uncomfortable the uh, the fist bump. The fist yeah. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? And she just looks at him and he's like, "Come on, this is terrible." <laughs> I mean, so Jost gave Chase some like really funny stuff to say too, for sure. Oh, but, the Palestine stuff. It, wow, so good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Che just. The last joke in particular, uh, like the the use of Black Widow in that way. Oh yeah, the, just one of the most brilliant bits of writing that has that has ever been on SNL. That is just a perfect joke. It's so good. Oh my gosh! The best joke in the weekend update that had nothing to do with joke swap was they showed a picture of Rudy Giuliani with the hair dye running down his face. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, pictured here somehow in better days. <laughs> 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 made me laugh out loud. <laughs> I thought it was a great. I thought the jokes yeah, were good. It was I, very. I good. It was yeah. all very good. Uh, but let's not let's not skip out on talking about uh, uh, Ego Wodum's role. Well, we're gonna get there. Oh, okay, just making sure. Didn't want to skip over it. All right, weekend update. Bit rich auntie with no kids on relaxing during the holidays. Rid my Ash Award. Ego Wodum. Gary Richardson and Alex English. Rich auntie with no kids, played by Ego Wodum, stops by weekend update to discuss why she finds the holiday season. Relaxing, I feel like Ego Odom does this kind of character in other like it's 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 a like a sassy black woman that you know try it's kind of like Lisa Temec in Lisa from Temecula a little bit in that way, um, but angled a little bit different. Did you guys find this one funny or no? I thought it was fine. Uh, I didn't love it. I do agree with you that it does feel similar to a, a few other characters that she has played before. Um, she does it very well, yeah, which is which really is why well. you know why some of the stuff still lands. And it's very funny. I think the interaction between her and Che is what makes it a little more engaging than it mm-hmm. otherwise might be. Um, I, the, I don't know that the jokes really landed though. No, it it wasn't like a hit or anything anything like that. Um, but but I thought it was fine. All right, moving on. Yankee Swap, a holiday gift exchange among coworkers, play portrayed by Kate McKinnon, Keenan Thompson, Andrew Deuce Mukes. Chloe Feynman, Punky Johnson, Molly Carney, and Michael Longfellow does not go as planned. I liked this one actually quite a bit, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the the, I didn't see the joke coming. So it was really funny. I loved what Keenan was doing. Uh, this wanting this dumb, you know, what was it? Santa? Boogie woogie, boogie Santa. woogie said, and don't you forget it. Uh, instead of the cure for his disease. I thought it was silly. I thought it was great. The escalation was good. What'd you think? I thought I didn't see it coming because I thought somebody was going to steal it. Like I thought Andrew just character yeah. was like, "Ooh, I'll take that." Yeah, but not wanting it is yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, but just like taking that, the, the the cure to a disease, stealing that from somebody. Maybe I, that's just demented. No, it's funny because I so I I did see this coming, but it didn't make it less funny to me. The fact that they they spent. That time, a good time building, introducing it, right? the boogie woogie Santa. I was like, and then once they did the drama, dramatic part, I was like, oh, okay, so he's gonna go for the boogie woogie yeah. Santa because that's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Keenan, the way he plays yep. this is just is just perfect. He's just giddy about <laughs> getting the boogie woogie Santa, and also Dismukes is just casual delivery of what when she's like, well, maybe you know you can use it for somebody in your family. He's like, I everyone in my family is white, so I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was the the character work here is the reason that the sketch works so well. And but and so here's the thing, I will say because I I do really enjoy the sketch, but I will I want to point out to reference what I mentioned earlier. This is one of those sketches where Kate McKinnon is just playing a straight person, and if mm-hmm. if this were a regular episode of SNL, 
she would just be be in there as a cast member playing a character but because she's the host yeah you want her to do more so having her in this sketch in this role it kind of feels like a missed opportunity and i like you when you have the host you want to see them being the like the big person in this in this sketch you know the only time you, you it's fine and it feels like it's better is when you have an actor who's not necessarily comedically inclined and they need to play the straight person. But with Kate McKinnon, you want her to be like the character who is standing out and doing the extremely funny thing, you know? And so it here, but she wasn't really. Yeah. And it's, and it's almost like it's, it's weird because when the, a person from SNL's cast comes back to host, you want them to fit seamlessly back into the role that they had before. So it's like they never left. But here, it's almost like she fit in too well into what she used to do rather than playing the part of host. Yeah, when she was a cast member, she wouldn't have been put in that role. Right. Um, that would have that would have went to like Cecily Strong or something, yeah. you know, um, playing that role. So, yeah, that is really interesting. Good, good, good observation. Good job, buddy. Thanks. All right. Cinema Classics on, CB- uh, on PBS's Cinema Classics, Reese do what? Portrayed by Kenan Thompson, introduces a scene from Meet Me in St. Louis featuring Kate McKinnon, Chloe Trost, and James Austin Johnson. How many times now has Cinema cinema Classics happened on SNL? I'm going to say they've done it 10 times. I'll go six. You were closer, 12. Whoa. Pow. This was the 12th time that they've done it. Reese to what? And did you like this better than previous times? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, I didn't hate it. Uh, I just feel like this was one of the more clumsy executions yeah, of it. I think so too. Um, I always love you guys like this one better than I do this cinema classic. I always like love Keenan Thompson's interludes, honestly. That's one of my favorite things about these sketches because I uh, know I'm a terrible guesser, yeah, exactly. Everything, every story he tells about his wife is hilarious. It's those, you know what, internet, make it happen. I need a supercut of just. Keenan as Reese to watch. Oh, it's got to be already talking out there. about his wife. I want to watch that. <laughs> but no, I, I honestly, um, I, I think that they had a really good idea here, and if they wouldn't have messed up so many times throughout the sketch, it probably would have worked better. But the, the, the prop cues, the camera cutting, uh, so many things went wrong just in this sketch. Did just had it COVID just, or something? Like, why, why honestly, was it so it bad? Was the, this, this was the the worst offender of the night as far as cuts. Yeah, I mean the the chainsaw gag would have been great if they would have if would have just cut and the props worked like properly and everything. Yeah, you know, it was, it was it was like there there was a producer missing or something yeah. that was not calling the shots like they usually do. Yeah, or I don't I don't know what it was, or but because uh, Kate Kate Mc, the look on Kate McKinnon's face and like the the voice she did as Tootie was really funny. Yes. Um. And and man, they are really just the, the now they're just really leaning into using Chloe Trost for any singing opportunity. Seriously, they can. Well, she's amazing. Yeah, she's great. Uh, but yeah, I just I I, I also, wish she's tall. I think Kate McKinnon's very short too, though. But but both like it works in the sketch so well though yeah. because of the mother daughter thing. But you know, anytime that you've got uh, characters that naturally fit together like that in a scene, it makes it better, right? Yeah. But yeah, I I wanted this to to be better, and it could have been a lot better. But they really just dropped the ball with this one. What do you think, Nate? Because you, you are you are our Christmas movie expert. So what what do you have to say about? Yeah, this? I I agree. The premise is is good. Um, I do always wonder if there's any kind of truth to some of the things, right? Where, because you hear of these old films, that, oh, yeah, like you know, like they wouldn't have uh, back then though. They wouldn't have told her her dog died. They didn't want to hit her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these, these kind of crazy worse, things, way right? Worse. Um, uh, how much truth? Or they any actually would have killed the dog. <laughs> yeah, because it was in front nine, of her. Nineteen twenty nine. They would have held the dog exactly. by its leash and held a gun to exactly. its head. <laughs> but, Better performance. I I don't love cinema classics as a whole. I think it's fine. What? And this was not one of the better ones, I didn't think. So oh. no. I agree though. I think I think there was some stutters there in this episode, like just some hiccups that yeah, happened. Yeah, just a lot of technological hiccups, a lot of a lot of didn't weird help cuts all. that didn't uh do it any favors when it was already kind of a struggle because again, Kate McKinnon disappears into these characters, but when she's asked to lead, it's just not really what she's meant to do. So they've done this next thing before this concept where um, when Billie Eilish hosted, they did a thing, her and Kate McKinnon, Business Garden Inn and Suites and Hotel Room Inn, and it was pretty popular. And so Billie Eilish is is the musical guest, and so they want to kind of redo that chemistry because that sketch was popular. People really liked it. And so this was a little different, though, but 
you could tell they were going for you know finding that that lightning in a bottle again. So this is uh, Whiskers Are We with Billie Eilish, Barbara De Drew played by Kate McKinnon, and Paul Bree <laughs> Paul Bree Hepburn. I believe it's Hepburn. Hepburn, Hepburn. Played by Billie Eilish, are showing off the cats available for adoption during the holiday Catacular. Did this work as well for you as Business Garden Inn and Suites and Hotel Room Inn? Um, and do you agree they're trying to kind of replicate some of the magic of that? Uh, so par- whisk- partially, whiskers are we as a thing? Yeah, I was going to say partially, but I think that what that you're forgetting is that when Kate McKinnon was on SNL, Whiskers Are We was like one of her yeah. her babies, and whoever the host was was her co-host every single time. But because she's the host and this is her sketch, they have to bring in somebody else. And so Billie Eilish is the next best person because she was a great SNL host. She's there as musical guest, so why not use Billie Eilish? But then of- also, to Nate's credit, then they, they did have that kind of same kind of weird sure. chemistry yeah. in that. I just feel like in- trying to make each other laugh a little yes, bit, or yes, you know, yeah, hundred percent. So I um. My favorite thing about this sketch is the surprise kind of world building that they did by making Billie Eilish's character become Barbara De- De Drew's daughter, basically, which was really funny. But again, I can't. I, I I feel like we're you know beating a dead horse here with this. This sketch did also suffer from a timing issue, and some of it I think was from them reading the cue cards a little too late and not bouncing off each other as well. There was also a weird thing. Uh, where I feel like there was a major distraction in that it felt like they grabbed the same cat like three, three, four, three, three or four times, times. Yeah. and I was I wasn't sure if like it was supposed to be the same cat and that was part of the gag or if they just couldn't get the other cats in their hands in time and they needed a cat in their hand. Uh, so that was I was I was kind of distracted by that and it kind of ruined the flow of the sketch in that way. But I did like the dynamic between uh, Kate and Billy again. I thought I thought that they, they had fun. Billy did kind of lose the voice towards the end, which was you know it's it's it, it is what it is. Um, but but yeah, I still I mean I, I always enjoy a good Whiskers Are We sketch. So it was it was, yeah. it was okay. It's one of those where I, I didn't laugh out loud once, but I smiled the whole time. Right again, I I enjoyed watching them work together. I liked the world building, the weirdness that they had. Um, it's obviously always incredibly hard to deal with live animals. Mm-hmm. So just and so Billy Eilish look looking second down. Second time, second time this episode. Do I put? Do I put this animal back in the in the box, or do I look to the stagehand to my left? And that happened multiple times, and it, it was very clearly hard for her to figure it out. And she almost broke the entire time she was doing it. I thought that was hilarious. Um, I don't know if you guys, by the way, well, now that we're talking about Billie Eilish, we don't usually talk about the musical guests, but I don't know if you listened to her performances. They were beautiful. Oh yeah, uh, she has an incredible voice. Yeah, I and mean, just just really stripped down, like very good. Like performances. Uh, Did you happen to see who helped Kate McKinnon introduce her in the first musical? Uh, was that Billie Eilish's mom, Greta Gerwig. Wow, got it. Did gotcha. you really not gotcha. know that that was Greta Gerwig? Had no, I've never seen a picture of her. She's an actress as well as yeah. being a director. So never, never seen her. You have. You've seen things. You, uh, she wear a wig a lot, or <sighs> yes, it was Barbie Weird. director Greta Gerwig helping Kate McKinnon introduce Billie Eilish. Gerwig. Yes. Oh, I thought it was Gerwig. <laughs> I mean, it could be both. Who knows? <laughs> wow. Wow, Brad. All right, let's do. Uh, there's two cover time sketches, uh, or at least one bit, one weekend update bit, and one sketch. All right, weekend update: Molly Carney on going home for the holidays. In this cover time weekend update, feature Molly Carney stops by to discuss spending time with their family during the holidays. If you've not watched these, go to the Saturday Night Live uh, YouTube channel and you can find them there. Um, this was Molly Carney behind the weekend update de- desk talking about. I, I think Thanksgiving, right? Or was it last Christmas? Or she was talking about thanks. She, she said, "Here's here's what we did for Thanksgiving because I'm yep. going home for Christmas, and this was so this was, she's what it's using be like. some things from her actual real life family and bringing them in to to essentially do some stand up on it." But I told these guys before the ep- before we recorded that I didn't love it as much, but on the second watch, I realized that. Like it just it suffered from some of the same stuff we talked about. There was just some awkwardness. Now this is this is the cover time sketches are are at their their rehearsals, so it it, it is naturally going to be a little rougher. But it just felt like there wasn't the ping pong there that I wanted to see. And I think if there if if it would have gotten there, this could have been fairly good. This is one of those things where if they would have just told the story. And and didn't appear like they were reading off the cue cards. It would have worked really, really well. And Marcelo Hernandez does this on Weekend Update uh, very well, where it very it just feels like an organic story that, that you're telling. And uh, Molly was clearly reading off cue cards, and it was a little stilted. But because it's so 
intimate because it's about their family, it really does take me out of it a little bit more because these are things you should really know because you're just this, you're just telling what happened at Thanksgiving. So that's that was why it was even more stilted for me than it normally. But would I do kind of want to know more about her family. Oh, it was I, funny. I don't I don't disagree. That looks awesome, and that story is a it, clearly. If they're telling that story at a party, I am just dying. I'm thinking that's the best thing ever. And they're showing you the text of all the stuff that's happening. Yeah, exactly. That would have been just fine. I think that I I, I, I want to cut them some slack because they clearly have a great story here. And yes. I, I the material is fantastic. And I do wonder if Molly has a problem reading material that they've likely done on the stand-up stage at some point and adapting it and having to read it from cue cards because... There's probably some cuts behind the scenes. There's probably some things that needed to be modified, maybe even just before dress rehearsal or something like that. And this is still the dress rehearsal, so we need yeah. to give them a lot more, you know, uh, 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 room here for improvement from the to the live show, of course. Yeah, and I, I think that maybe what it is is just them having trouble adapting to that and making it as smooth as it otherwise would be if they were performing it on stage. Because I'll, I'll totally bet fair. if they did something like this in a stand-up set. It would kill, and it would be you know what you want it yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going to cut them slack because the story there is clearly very good, and I would love to see a polished version of that you know uh, someday. Yeah. Do you think this bit had more potential than Ego Wodens that actually made the show? I I think so. If it if if it would have been polished and and yeah ready for prime time ooh, as they ooh. say, uh, yeah yeah I think so. All right, moving on. Paperless Post. In this Cut for Time sketch, a commercial advertises Paperless Post's newest feature. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a basic commercial premise. Uh, the escalation is there. It's just not necessarily as sharp as you want it to be. I didn't think it was that funny. I so I uh, I have one of my uh, logical nitpicks. Oh boy, do you know? Do, 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 do you know do. what it is? No, I don't care. No. Oh yeah, no, no. What is it, Brad? Fuck you. <laughs> uh, so obviously it's called paperless post, and then they come they, up. They throw a, a paper uh, wrapped around a brick. That no, honestly, they say paperless brick, and there's paper on the brick that gets thrown through it. There, there's paper on everything, so none of it is paperless. Uh, just really took me out of the whole. <laughs> The, the the pack of wild dogs really took me out of the moment. Yeah, uh, it was it was fine. You could see why why it was cut. You know, it wasn't wasn't among their best. Ben, you agree? Yeah, uh, I I feel bad for sketches like this because that's full production. That they went all the way through and had it ready made, and so people worked really hard on that, and then it just well, doesn't you go watch it. What's that? You get to watch it? No, I know, but like think about that. The the live audience didn't get to see it, and it, it doesn't get. Did you enjoy it? Uh, it wasn't amazing so what are you complaining about i don't know man i just feel bad <laughs> it's the holidays i want everybody's st- it's like, the holiday season oh. so whoop de do like, oh, and man. trunk gather around saturday night live my the thing i worked on is gonna be on it, on it. oh it didn't it didn't make it. well they know beforehand so. i don't know do they yeah the stagehands know the, you think a stagehand made that sketch he helped with what with the dogs what they were his dogs. Oh, boy. He brought them to Roscoe and Bosco. Roscoe brought, and the Bosco. He brought them from home. Okay, great. Well, guys, that was Kate McKinnon's Saturday Night Live. Uh, I will say I felt eh. a little bit disappointed after after the big runs of Emma Stone and Adam Driver. It, I wish we would have ended uh, on at least an I, equally high note. I will note. tell you, though, that I don't blame Kate McKinnon. No, not uh, her, fault. Not her not fault. Not her by fault by any means. And it's not as if she was even bad, necessarily. And this isn't even among the worst episodes. No. It's not a bad episode. No, it's not, not at all. Yeah, it just I think maybe our expectations were a little too high. We I were, disagree with we Nate were, and Brad. It was not a bad episode. We were riding riding that wave of just being so excited with Emma Stone and Adam Driver. We were just like, ooh, more candy. Uh, and we just we didn't get any candy. We got we got we got a little bit of candy. We, have, like, we got like those butterscotch. We, those mints that they hand out at weddings. That was like you know I, I still like them. But uh, Andy's yeah. mints? No, not Andy's mints. I love the Andy's butter mints. mints. Put get, Andy's get, mints in the freezer and have them cold. Ooh, oh, that is good yes. stuff. Mm. Wow. I will chomp up some chilled Andy's mints like no other. Well, who was your Andy's mints sponsored MVP of the episode, Brad? Uh, Andy's mints. Uh, chill them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my personal MVP. I'm going to give it. You're making you it. Oh, you didn't even think this through. You, have, you don't have one. You son of a bitch. You, you got, don't you, have you one. You got me. Nate, do you have one? 
my personal MVP as I sit here and think. And honestly, there were quite a few that were in the running. Let's see, how many sketches did we have? Let's count it's, them one by one. It's Keenan Thompson. It's Keenan Thompson. Ooh. Yeah, you know, I, I think you're right with the combination That's of who I picked too. of, of re- <laughs> Reese to what and the the sickle cell the sickle sketch, no, yeah. the, the boogie. I'm, I, I call it the boogie what a say boogie what you said. Oh, no, I call it the whatever sketch. you want to call it. It was only two sketches, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but, <laughs> but he stood out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was the. Good uh, stuff. You could go maybe Bo and Yang. You can always go Bo and Yang. I'm giving it to Keenan this time. Yeah, I think Keenan got it. I'm going to give it to Doctor Hattie Davis. <laughs> I mean, well, if we're gonna be honest, Che. I oh mean, yeah, no. I mean, sketch of the night. I know we can't pick uh, that. Not, not a sketch, but like that. That was the, the weekend update oh, yeah. joke. That was the funniest was moment. The high, of, yeah. height if of you're this if you're gonna tell somebody, hey, if you can only watch one thing about SNL this weekend, everybody's gonna say watch jokes. Watch. I had some friends that know I do this podcast, and they said, why didn't you send us this? You know, beforehand because this is hilarious. It's they saw it on Twitter. Amazing, um, yeah. and it is it is genuinely. I mean, I, I might have teared up a little bit when I was when when Colin reaches out his hand to fist bump her. But isn't it so I funny though, knowing so that much. that is not a actual person? Oh, it does. Well, make, it Colin makes it Jost funnier. thought it, it was. Funnier. Well, it makes me feel bad, which is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should know better. Um, know more about my history. Yeah, I mean the the work they went into pushing her in the wheelchair and everything <sighs> like it's just Michael Che. You know what? No, well, I'm know, saying it. You get it. You well, get the MVP. So of the now, what I want to know too: What is the actress's name? Daphne Skeeter. Skeeter. Yeah. I want to know if she actually needs a wheelchair because if she doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> holy she, she shit! Just, just another layer of brilliance. That would be amazing. Yeah. So if that actress doesn't actually need a wheelchair, fucking amazing work. Oh, oh. my god! Just a great extra layer of. Uh, oh. I I don't. I don't know this for sure, but I don't think she does. Uh, I see here. Um, uh, here's a video of her walking. <laughs> she was just dancing with the Laker girls last week. Um, so um, this is amazing. On r slash uh, live from New York, which is the SNL subreddit, uh, somebody says, "Is Hattie Davis a real person?" And the first comment, uh, I'll do, I'll do a name here. Inevitable uh, Carerist says, "I fell for it too." Hattie equals from Hattie McDaniel, who received an Academy Award. I think Gone with the Wind, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Davis equals from Ozzy Davis, actor and civil rights activist. Ozzy's wife was, of course, Ruby D, not Hattie, so the name is made up. Um, A a commentary, uh, or a a commenter on last night's live reaction thread said they recognized her as an extra from prior shows and seasons, so her face may be familiar. The wheelchair was what threw me, and that that seemed too real, but it was a performance. Oh, man. Amazing. Even Just, even right at the very very end, when the sketch is over and Colin leans over, she still she gave still him a like, mm, mm, "I'm not doing yep. it," which made me think this is perfect. Yeah. It's so good. That was great. All right. Uh, well, this is the last episode uh, from us for of the this year. podcast uh, ever. <laughs> uh, we've we will, gotten your hand, your fan mail. We will be back in the new year. Uh, <laughs> we know what we're not wanted. <laughs> SNL is basically going to be gone for a month. Uh, they will not be back until January twentieth, twenty twenty four. Uh, where the episode will be hosted by Jacob Elordi. Uh, guys, who is Jacob Elordi? So for those of you that don't know, uh, Jacob Elordi is a the grandson of uh, Christian jo- Dior. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Great. Uh, Jacob Elordi is, isn't he in the upcoming Priscilla movie? Well, Priscilla already came out. Oh, did yes. already, uh, that's how much <laughs> uh, I saw. We don't know. Um, it's the first time I doubted. I don't know. Uh, he was in... Uh, I don't um, know who this is. Jacob Elordi uh, plays Elvis Euphoria, and Priscilla. Right? He's on Euphoria. Uh, he's also in Saltburn. He uh, plays one of the main characters he's in Saltburn. He's uh, in the Netflix films The Kissing Booth. Man. Yeah. Uh, he is, he's a fantastic young actor. He's quite the heartthrob right now, so he'll be hosting on January 20th. I couldn't believe you hadn't heard of him. Yeah, never. He's, no, he's a I mean, he's he's not a huge. His, huge his guy name is being dropped a lot right so now. So it's the first time in history that I can that I didn't know the host, and and I didn't know the host. Renee Rapp. Hold She's on. great. Uh, when when um, who's the the guy from Bridgerton that hosted? Oh, uh, Renee Jean Page. Oh, so I didn't Renee Jean Page. I didn't know his name, but as soon as I saw him, it was like, oh, I know who that is. Yeah. This was the first time I looked at the guy's photo, and I was like, nope, I've never seen this guy before yeah. in my life. But you thought, oh, I'll kiss him. Oh, of course. Yeah. But. 
It's just, it was awkward. I'm, 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 I'm an old man. I'm interested why Rene Rapp is coming as the musical guest. So, as uh, from what I understand, uh, even she's, though she's a rapper, even though she is in uh, the Mean Girls musical and she is known as an actress, she's really making a big push to like uh, have a musical career really? a, as a singer. So, so she's releasing music. Yeah, like okay. she, like she. Uh, I don't know if it's already out or if it's still forthcoming, but she will have like a full fledged album and everything. And she's she's working on being like a full singer in addition so, to being an actress. So, do you think Tina Fey pulled that off? Uh, I don't necessarily know. I think it's it's the, it's a happy combination because Mean Girls the musical does hit theaters in January. I think just the just the week before maybe or something like that. So it's probably just good timing. Um, and maybe you know they maybe she didn't want to host because she wanted to just really focus on being the musical guest so that people can see oh she's just the musical guest and she's only singing she's not doing you know the the acting along with well it. she better so, be in a few sketches then if she's an actress. I mean I mean but it just it just still confuses me other than. Unless she's going to do Mean Girls songs, I think it's probably just her. It's it's because it's, she got to be... have a new album coming out. She had an album that came out in like June. Yeah, but that happens sometimes. I mean, you get musical guests and just kind of what the schedule yeah, but is. She it's... didn't have a single Why can't song. You just be happy for her? No, I am super happy. I I love her. She's Man, great in the sex the, lives of college it is girls. The, it's the it's got to be the synergy of like her. The schedule allows it. Mean Girls is coming out, and like she wants to promote the music yeah. side without doing because usually. There have been musical guests where I'm like, I'm not, I kind of heard of them, but I don't know. But then you go and you, you find that they've sold, you know, 8 billion records. Like Paul and McCartney. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so. They had no idea who Paul McCartney was. I don't still. The guy from Wings? No, Rolling Stones. Love, um, take me down to the streets. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know. It confuses me. So I'm, I, I like her though. So well, we'll, we'll be back after the January 20th episode. Uh, we might find some time before then in January to do one of our uh, movie episodes. Uh, we do have Stuart Saves His Family waiting in the wings, just ready for some laughs. <laughs> this will be a good one. You guys ready for it? Ringing the new year with Stuart Saves His Family. Why not? Gotta, All right. Gotta start the year fresh. I love it. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, be sure to come back. Tell your friends. Keep up with Saturday Night Live with us. Uh, you can find my reviews of new episodes of Saturday Night Live on SlashFilm.com on Sunday mornings or afternoons, whenever the fuck I get around to it. And uh, Ben and Nate are around online. Sure. Hey, Merry yeah. Christmas, Nate. Hey, I love you, buddy. Love you, Brad. I love you, Ben. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love you, Nate. Wow. It came <laughs> upon a midnight I don't know the rest of the song. You're a pastor, Nate. You should know more than this. Yeah. It's the only words in any of us. It's true. All right. Well, guys, I love you, Brad. I love oh. you, Ben. Love you, guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. <laughs>